Across the United States, we are seeing a disturbing and dangerous rise in legal prosecutors targeting Black artists by using their art against them in a criminal trial. Prosecutors are now trying to establish legal grounds that the judge and jury should take musical lyrics literally and hold them against each artist during trial. This trend started back in December of 2019 when the state of Maryland's highest court declared that rap lyrics can be used in court as evidence. However, Senate Bill S-7527, which is better known as the Rap Music on Trial Bill, is a legislative act that would put a stop to this. The bill would essentially prevent prosecutors from using lyrics as evidence in most court and criminal cases. And everyone from Jay-Z to Meek Mill to Big Sean, Killer Mike, and Vic Mensa are among the many artists who have already rallied around the bill in its efforts to advocate against rap lyrics being used as evidence in criminal trials. Now, there are several reasons why the motion to use rap lyrics against rap artists is symptomatic and demonstrative of systemic racism. For one, hip hop was created and founded by Black Americans. Its very roots are deeply ingrained and built from Black culture, and its very existence is a result of creating poetic versions of the Black experience in America. It started out and still remains today an auditory and artistic expression of various Black experiences and an outlet for self-expression in a society that consistently tries to box us in and tie us down to various limiting and racist forms of respectability politics. So when we hear about courts wanting to use lyrics against rap artists, it's blatantly clear that this effort is synonymous with racist ideals, which not only claim that black artists don't have the same mental capacity for storytelling and artistry as their white musical counterparts, but also takes another major step toward continuing mass incarceration and demonizes anything that is associated or synonymous with the black experience in America. Now, as Jay-Z's attorney, Alex Shapiro, once perfectly stated in a previous letter, this tactic effectively denies rap music the status of art, and in the process, gives prosecutors a dangerous advantage in the courtroom. By presenting rap lyrics as rhyme confessions of illegal behavior, they are often able to obtain convictions even when other evidence is lacking. Alex makes a really good point here because prosecutors can simply defer to artistic and sometimes fictitious lyrics when evidence is lacking, thus building a false case against clients and resulting in thousands of potential wrongful accusals. After hearing about rap music being used as evidence in court, I instantly thought about how during the time that slave codes existed, enslaved people were beaten and whipped for communicating with each other through song and for singing on the plantation. Now this was largely done out of fear from the slave captors who thought that enslaved people were using song to communicate ways to escape throughout the Underground Railroad. At the time, learning to read and write as a person who was enslaved was outlawed, so many people communicated with each other through arts. Just based on that historic information along, it's no secret that arts and music has always held a significant place throughout our history. You'll see that not much has changed to today. The same thing that was taking place during the 1700 slave code is still happening today, but just through covert and subtle laws and systems. Now that courts are trying to weaponize art, they are also trying to weaponize our art, which will in turn also stifle culture and art that is produced under new limits from artists who are seeking to avoid police targeting and harassment. The same can also be said for predominantly hip hop festivals where police are overly present. Rolling Loud is just a real life example of concerts and festivals that predominantly have black musicians at center stage performing. These sort of festivals that have predominantly black musicians also seem to have a high rate of police officers staking out on artists and strategizing to make very public and media driven arrests on rappers. This is ultimately done to send a message to peers and other black affluent figures that they can be taken away at any time. Police officers hovering to arrest artists at predominantly Black-led concerts, while country music festivals and heavy metal and screamo shows where violence typically does erupt in mosh pit-like settings are all symptoms of conditions that are purposely set up to treat Black people like we are in cages at a zoo. If we look at genres like country music and pop music, a lot of times artists will write songs about serious issues such as domestic abuse, yet this bill specifically seems to target rap artists. Another clear example of this would be the case of Marilyn Manson. 
If you look at Marilyn, a lot of his songs are about disturbing topics like school shootings and abuse. And he's not alone. There are so many different artists um, across genres, even particularly in metal and screamo genres, who do the same thing. Yet many of Marilyn's fans and certain members of the general public seem to take his music to be poetic and symbolic of larger, more serious themes and issues that we face in society. Despite the fact that Marilyn actually allegedly committed horrible abuses against women in real life, and many women have came forward accusing him of grooming them with drugs and alcohol and holding them captive, as well as controlling when they eat and sleep. Yet, despite this, Marilyn has never once had his music, which heavily aligns with his alleged real-life crimes, used in a court against him. This is just one prime example of how even though oftentimes white artists may be guilty of a crime and courts have clear evidence hidden in plain sight to use against them, they're instead granted the grace of interpreting their music as art. Whereas on the other hand, black celebrities who may not be guilty of their alleged crimes may have their music taken literally to build a witch hunt against them or charge them on far less serious crimes like selling weed or gun possession. This phenomenon is pretty much an exact mirror of what goes on in the world outside of music. When we look closely at instances of police brutality, oftentimes a narrative that racist cops, courts, and officials will use is one that demonizes a black person in an attempt to justify their mistreatment. Yet, if you ever watch body cam footage of how cops and courts interact with white subjects, leniency is granted. So often white and many non-black subjects who are being arrested are given basic human rights to have a conversation and question police officers. Not only that, but oftentimes when a crime is committed by a non-black person, cops and court systems will oftentimes try to infantilize them and handle them more delicately by simply chalking their actions up to them battling mental health, or simply having a bad day. To wrap everything up, it can be said that using song lyrics in court pretty much all across the board, Black people are far more likely to be charged for crimes they didn't commit, petty crimes, and are even far more likely to have evidence planted on them in the form of music, as well as basic forms of self-expression like music, weaponized and held against them, especially in comparison to their white counterparts who might actually be guilty and have stronger cases against them. So what can be done to fix this? You can read more at our website, www.incidiaryballoons.com, on how you can advocate and push forward the Rap on Trial Bill. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.